We continue our reading of Lest We Forget, a daily devotional by author George R. Knight. Today's reading, September 29. Righteousness by Faith and the Third Angel's Message, Part 1. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Revelation 14, 12. As we have seen, by 1888, the disjunction between Adventism and the evangelical understanding of salvation had become problematic. Adventists were strong on the distinctive Adventist beliefs of, but weak on the great gospel teachings that their founders had shared with other Christians. Ellen White saw Jones and Wagner as a corrective to that difficulty. Contrary to some works-oriented leaders of the day, Wagner realized that his church had departed from the historic doctrine of salvation. Ellen White has spoke to the same truth in expressing her surprise that some found Jones and Wagner's teaching to be a strange doctrine when their message was not a new truth, but the very same that Paul taught, that Christ himself taught. Manuscript, page 27. 1889. Wagner's comment that his interpretation of law and gospel reflected that of Paul, Luther, and Wesley became even more profound and insightful when he added that it was a step closer to the heart of the third angel's message. Ellen White came to the very same viewpoint. Observing that some had expressed fears that we shall dwell too much upon the subject of justification by faith, she indicated that several had written to her inquiring of the message of justification by faith is the third angel's message. She replied, it is the third angel's message in verity, that is, in truth. Review and Herald, April 1, 1890. That statement has mystified some. What exactly did she mean? We will examine that topic the next few days. Meanwhile, we should recall that Revelation 14.12 is the central text in Adventist history. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus Recognizing the implications of the Adventist use of that text as a description of their denomination, a reporter from the Minneapolis Journal pointed out that it is either monstrous egotism or sublime faith which leads them to apply this text to themselves. The Adventists, of course, considered it sublime faith and both sides in the 1888 crisis came to realize ever more clearly as time passed that their differences at Minneapolis centered on the meaning of Revelation 14.12. By the way, that is a good text to memorize as we meditate upon its meaning and implications. This concludes our reading today of Lest We Forget.